Let's see, master. No, nope, I don't know where I have to put it into my notes. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I thought that was interesting. Of course, there's a lot of people leaving Reddit to go to various activity pub alternatives, which I think is really interesting. It is kind of interesting, yeah. Uh, let's see. And there's a uh, Lenny and a couple other things that are sort of like activity pub compliant mastodon extending something 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 i'm not sure i understand at all what they do but that seems to be happening too yeah i mean right any activity pub system can theoretically talk to each other so you can use Ma your mastodon account and system to subscribe to lenny or um, the other one which is uh lemmy right yeah. Yep. Um, Reddit activity pub. I think it's. Uh, Lemmy and. Where did the other one go? It's some something. K bin. That's the other one that I've seen a lot of people. K B I N. Do. Yeah. Uh, Reddit. Some of that one. Lemmy and Kaven. Kaven dot social. A Reddit like content aggregator. Well, how about that? Mm -hmm. Kaven feels a lot more like uh, Metafilter than Reddit, um, whereas Lemmy is like very directly uh, attempting to be Reddit. Uh, hmm. I mean, I think they're both potentially valuable. Kaben's the less stable of the two for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I'm just gonna hmm. open notes real quick for us. Keep thinking it's next month, but thank hmm. God not quite yet. Uh, let's see. So uh, yeah, I mean, I am generally like very excited about you know activity pub stuff happening. It just doesn't seem to ever maintain momentum. Um, let's see. Yeah, what's the deal about that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think part of it is just like the nature of activity pubs decentralization mm -hmm. means it's very difficult to gather people and give them a consistent experience and connect them with each other and have them reacquire their networks. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. So the very architecture of activity pub makes get building critical mass or having a common experience challenging. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's like that it is self challenging on the platform. I think it's that it's challenging to get to the point where it occurs. Mm -hmm. um, like once you are on the platform and you've ported a chunk of your community, uh, like it feels, uh, it feels like good with that community, but it's never going to be uh, like, it's just not at the same level as the other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I just no, got right. an alert about a deploy. <laughs> At least you're not in a submersible that just lost power or something at 4,000 meters below the below the ocean surface. Uh, 
Yeah, that's bad. Uh, we it, um, I actually oh no, go ahead. Uh, it turns out we know one of the people who's on board. Oh wow, yeah. that's wild. Yeah, the Shazada Dawood is a young global leader, and so is my wife April. So we've met him at a couple of events, uh, YGL events, and 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 I wound up scrolling down, going, I read about some you know Pakistani businessman. I'm like, nah, it couldn't be him. And, Sure as hell, it's him. It's him and his son are two of the passengers. Oh, he's the one whose kid is on there. Jeez, that yep. that is terrible. Yeah, yeah. Really uh, I hope they find it. Um, it's an interesting to see the reaction for sure. I, it's, yeah. I understand people's frustration. It's very difficult to see, um, like the immediate context of refugee ships versus what's happening here mm -hmm. and not have a negative reaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I distracted you. You were finding, or uh, were you, did you put out the fire you had? Uh, I put the right person to put the fire out. Excellent. Uh, there, yeah. Um, I think that it's, yeah. I mean, I, so I wrote something about it. I put it into our notes. I'll put it into the chat too, uh, which is like very frustrated about being stuck on Twitter. Still, it's yeah. the it's the network problem, right? The community's still on Twitter, so like there's a section of my community that's moved fully to um, that's moved fully to. To Mastodon? To, to, uh, to Mastodon, yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, that's great, but like there's a whole subset of that community that's still just on Twitter. And the same thing happens with Reddit, right? Like you could even port the stuff over, or all of the content over, but if you can't get the community to move over, it's very difficult to make a switch. Um, and that sucks. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do about that. Like I don't have a good answer for how to fix it um it's too bad uh and i don't think like any social networks necessarily solves that problem right like blue host it's not blue host uh, blue, sky, blue sky yeah blue sky post the rest of them right like these are all s sufficient um like social networks from, mm -hmm. from a technical perspective the but it, it's just very difficult to get a community to move. Um, it's, you know, the joke goes, you, you can build Twitter in a weekend, but you're not going to make Twitter. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. There, is, it, is, it, was, is that just a phenomenon of the moment when Twitter launched and a bunch of people jumped in and it's really hard to get them to move? Is it just that? It's, a, it's an artifact of history? Or is there something else that, that's about the about the critical mass of social groups uh, in general, or is there something else about the fact that other tools just don't create the same sense of flow and connection as Twitter does, even though they have way fewer people than Twitter does? I mean, I was surprised at how few humans are actually on Twitter compared to Facebook. Like, oh, Twitter, yeah. Twitter is just a wee a wee bump on a wee bump on the road for Facebook. Facebook is like more humans than the populations of India and China combined. And Twitter is what, 800 million or something? Probably down now? Yeah, it's very small. But the thing is, right, like, and I, I, write, I write about that in the piece. It's like Twitter was never about massive 450. adoption. 450 right now. Yeah. Twitter was never about massive adoption so much as it is about being a particularly effective tool for amplification. Uh -huh. Right, like... When Twitter succeeds, it doesn't actually succeed on Twitter so much, right? There, I couldn't find the link. I wanted to put it in there, but like BuzzFeed orchestrated a study or reported on a study like five or six, seven years ago now, maybe. Um, that was basically like links do not really go widely viral on Twitter that much, but Twitter is the origin point from which they go viral on other platforms. Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah. And there's I remember, something, I remember something I, like that. Yeah. And I think it's just, I, I don't know. I think there's something unique about 
or there was something unique about Twitter. I'm not sure it still is the case or if it is, it's failing, right? But there was something unique about Twitter in its format or tools or mechanism. I mean, I always felt like there's something unique about Twitter and nobody knows what it is. And that's why for many, many years, right, they didn't change anything, mm -hmm. right? Facebook changed shit all the time. And like in the amount of time that Twitter was like basically static and not making changes, mm -hmm. Facebook like rebooted its UI like three times. Right. Um, right. So they, they only tried to plug things into Twitter. They never tried to change Twitter. And I think that's because there's something in Twitter mm -hmm. that makes it work that nobody has yet identified. And they correctly assumed that it would be very easy to break the thing that you have not identified what it works. Interesting. As. I was really bummed when they killed off all the other clients. Like I was using other clients and was enjoying that. And I didn't see any reason for them to nuke, you know, competitive clients. That seems stupid. As we see at Reddit, that's the hot thing now. Uh, I, have a, I have another thing that I want to write about that, actually, which is like the problem is that like the type of people who run social media companies see API consumers as um, costs mm -hmm. and not opportunities. Mm -hmm. Whereas like it would be very easy and most people who are extending the API, right? Like for all of these places, your model is advertising. Mm -hmm. It would be very easy to set up rev share deals with clients as part of a condition of doing an API mm -hmm. or even, or even not rev share, just be like you, if you want to use the API, you have to have our ads very easy to test, very easy to determine. Right. I mean, right. I think the reality of the situation is the free web is powered by ads. So if you're going to provide a tool like Twitter or provide a tool like Reddit, and you're going to make your money off of the ads, which is what you have to do at that scale, you have to, approach how you do that monetization in a way that supports you know api because api is an important part of what makes these yeah. sites go big um it's it's just very it's like they're just throwing out a lot all of the social media sites are right like yeah. despite the fact that it's completely unproven that whatever twitter is doing is going to work in fact it certainly looks like it's not going to um, everyone's following in their footsteps. It's it's weird because there's not been a, a, a good Twitter substitute. Also, my Twitter feed is still useful. Like I'm st still got Twitter open in a tab now. Um, basically, tweet deck in a tab is what I'm down to. Uh, I'm still in there. I still look every day. It's it's still my early warning system for news. I, I haven't found a better one. Um, a lot of the people I care about or follow are still there doing interesting things. So if I curate my, you know, who I follow, uh, I still got good stuff, which is weird, even though I think that I, so my inference of Musk's actions is that he is actively trying to destroy Twitter is that, that he, he is doing enough, he, certainly he is doing so, enough, right? enough asinine thing that he must intend to just destroy it and see if he can't take down democracy in the process. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, maybe. I don't know. It seems insane to me, but I guess it's very possible. It's just, I mean, I think really what it is, is like Twitter's value and how it works is so undefined. Um, that we don't, that like, even if he did have something he wanted to do with it, he doesn't know how to do it because... He doesn't know how Twitter works. Nobody knows how Twitter works. So, Nobody at Twitter knew how Twitter worked. So what's, like, what's this sure mystery about? The engineering worked. Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, Twitter, if you look at one screen of Twitter and then you compare it to one screen of Facebook, there is a lot more going on on Facebook than there is on Twitter. Twitter is like one little thing repeated over and over again in, in, in queues, right? Uh, and then... There's some algorithms that are behind the scenes that are determining which of everybody's cues that you follow you actually see and which ones you don't, which ought to be more visible and manipulable in different ways. That would be kind of cool. Um, but what, there, there isn't, and then there's an ad engine that tries to slip things in the stream. That, that's it. That's your, that's your Twitter thing. And Facebook, there's, if you look at one screen full of Facebook, there are 10 things that are at least that complicated going on simultaneously, which is yeah. very weird.
Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It sucks because it's definitely failing, right? Like one of the things that I do is I have like my notification stream and in the morning I can pull, you know, go to the bottom and then go to the yesterday evening, right? right which right. covers stuff that I missed. It doesn't work anymore. I can't go past today in hmm. that screen on my app anymore. Hmm. Um, like search is consistently broken. Um, like one of the major things that I used to do is like I, I use Twitter as like a search of my own background. Oh, of interesting. Stuff that I've tweeted. Wow. Because uh, I put a lot of stuff on there yeah. and I don't delete anything. Yeah. And so like, I get a lot of value out of searching from at Chronotope, which is my Twitter username, yeah. and then some keyword, and then going to the latest tab to sort it by time. And like half the time I do that, it doesn't work. Um, probably more than half now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and lists also are having trouble like going backwards more than a day. It's clearly breaking. Mm -hmm. um, and it sucks because, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why nothing else works as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's a strange mystery yeah um i don't know it, it truly baffles me because i would love to right like i said it's very easy to make twitter from a code perspective it's just expensive to scale it up but like um i don't know i don't know what makes it work and why none of these other things have worked and mm -hmm. why like community, it's very interesting to me. I do think there is some level of first mover, but not in like the effectiveness of the platform so much as the centrality of multiple communities. Right. I think the thing about the interesting thing about Twitter is right, like a lot of different communities ended up interacting in ways they wouldn't otherwise have right. because they would have gone to isolated places. Um, but Twitter was just early enough to capture them all before something could like think through that concept right like probably what we conceive of as like black twitter mm -hmm. would prefer to have would have preferred to have been on its own platform that someone could have built I'm, but it was too late twitter got there first yeah right like um i'm friends with one of the founders of net noir back in the day which uh dates back to like 98 at least and it's like there were attempts to do um, black portals, other, you know, other portals, all kinds of different things, just that they didn't stick. And, and maybe, yeah. maybe co-mingling these communities is one of the sort of signs of health. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the case. And maybe that's why like some of these things are failing so badly because the different communities are going to different places, right? Yeah. Like, um, uh, blue sky has a very different set of people than, um any given mastodon server i mean the only uh, the only one of my communities that has successfully ported to anywhere is mastodon and like the weird website builders crew mm -hmm. right Pe people who enjoy making websites and, and like they're not indicative of anything because they're the type of people who would love mastodon for things that normal users don't care about. Right. Um, which is a shame. Mastodon, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's very difficult to find out what exactly makes it work because I genuinely think nobody who worked at Twitter ever understood what made Twitter work. Hmm. Uh, because if they did, they would have tried to build on it in some way. And they never tried to do that. It's never been, it's never been successfully replicated. It's never been successfully expanded. Like that's why trying to tack Twitter to growth was always a bad idea because Twitter's at like the number of people that make it makes it work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which is, it, it's like Twitter is like an influencer platform, but for text. Do you think that if right? Twitter That's had three X, do you think if Twitter had three X its current number of users and healthy management, that that would be too many users for the platform and it would lose its magic? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's very strange to consider because I, it's always grown without 
that being a problem yeah. in the past. Yeah. Um, but like maybe there is some maximum growth number uh, that Twitter has. I mean, this gets back to like what makes Twitter work. Yeah. Who knows? Um, maybe it is that there's a, it's under a certain number of people for that is the secret to an online community. Yeah. I really could not like, there's a lot of things. My theory of what Twitter is, I think is very solid. Twitter is a place to hold parties around content, specifically around text content. Hmm. That's, that is what Twitter is. It is a place where we celebrate text content specifically. Um, but like why it works, I don't know. I really do not know why Twitter works. And I don't think anyone ever did or does, um, mm -hmm. which is pretty wild to think about. Like, it's like if our entire like phone system was based on mm -hmm. some property that we did not understand. So maybe what's missing, maybe what's missing is a simple mass move over to a different sim, a different platform. Um, back when Mao ran the four pests campaign, they decided that sparrows were one of the pests. And so they had all the citizens of China go out and scare the sparrows into the air and not let the sparrows roost until the sparrows dropped from the sky dead. And they so successfully eliminated sparrows that all of the creatures that the sparrows had been eating turned into a major pest campaign, a whole new one. And there was famine that killed like 20 million Chinese because they had killed off one of the predators in the, in the ecosystem. But they managed to do that by getting all the citizens to go up and go outside and do this one thing at the same time, right? So what if we do a, everybody stand up and move over to that platform thing. Uh, what, what if magically we could get everybody to sort of synchronize that way and just can pick up their conversations on the next platform. I mean, maybe it would work. I mean, that's basically what happened with dig, right? Mm -hmm. Like one day dig was the top of the upvoting websites and then everybody decided no, thank you and moved to Reddit. Right. Uh, and yeah, I, and maybe it'll happen with Reddit now. So it seems to be much more difficult somehow. Right. I think like these companies have achieved capture much more effectively now than they had then. Uh, it would probably be much harder to leave Dig today than it was back when it actually happened. Same thing happened for SourceForge to GitHub, except I can point to the dynamics of GitHub as being much more functional than the dynamics baked into SourceForge. So there, there was, to me, there was a reason why GitHub won that race. Yeah, I mean, may, maybe Twitter will finally score itself enough that everyone will fly and yeah. move somewhere else. Yeah. But I think, like, ironically, the this all of these alternatives makes it very unlikely that everyone is going to just move over to a single one other right. place. Right. Uh, maybe that's for the best. I don't know. But I think the there was a Twitter era in which Twitter was in a very fundamentally way in control of discourse on the internet. Um, well, even I, if it was very indirect control. Was it was it control or was it just that they were the venue but they couldn't control what was going on in the venue? Well, I think, I don't, I mean like Twitter, the people on Twitter, yeah. not Twitter, the company. Okay, um, good. And I gotcha. think Twitter, the people on Twitter were in control of it, both on and off platform in that it set, made, and pushed forward the agendas of these different communities. Yeah. Um, and maybe that time has passed and maybe that's for the best. You could argue that like the mechanisms of that, that, were great that caused things like the Arab Spring, right? Yeah. Or also the mechanisms that got Trump elected, right? So, like, it is it certainly a neutral power in the sense that it can be used for good or evil. Mm -hmm. So maybe it would be better if we did not have it anymore. Um, yeah, maybe that's for the best. I would, uh, I would miss Twitter if it didn't exist. That's for sure. It's an important part of my keeping in touch routine. Yeah, me too. But like the flip side is we said the same thing about uh, 
there were plenty of people who said the same thing about Dig. There were plenty of people who said the same thing about previous iterations. Yeah. But I, I do agree that there is something that, once again, like it's indescribable, but there is something about Twitter in particular that is special that I don't understand. Right, because I was very active on Facebook at one point, like extremely active, like running a small news organization by myself level of active. Wow. I'm getting a corresponding level of traffic. Yeah. But like literally one day I was like, this is not worth it. And I left and I never thought I never gave it a second thought. Yeah. Um, But like Twitter, I can't leave. Um, right there's something else going on there there's some other thing that is making it difficult and no matter all of the and like there are lots of people who are making very big efforts to be like let's set up a discord let's mm-hmm. go into blue sky let's have a yeah you know a, a, a tumblr um because tumblr's back now it's just but it's none of it works like twitter and i don't know why mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i have no idea I feel like I'm saying that a lot, but it really is just like mm-hmm. Twitter had some magic that it is in the process of demolishing. Yeah, which is insane to me. It is like even Crazy. if even from even from someone like Musk's perspective, like, and this is why I said maybe it's better off that it is demolished because clearly he has leveraged it to do bad shit mm-hmm. very successfully, and he's destroying his own tool for that. Right, right, like. Would Musk have been as successful without Twitter? Probably not. Will he be as successful if he destroys Twitter? I mean, probably not. I mean, hard to measure because he will have demolished billions and billions of his own dollars yeah. if he demolishes Twitter. So that's another reason why not. But still. I mean, aside from practically from severely dam- crippling Twitter, the company, um, he's also managed kind of single-handedly self-inflicted to damage his own reputation immeasurably. Like before he before his mad dash to buy the, the Twitter and do everything he's done to it, he was the genius who had stood up like four major companies, like the largest automaker in the US was Tesla. Like everybody else was busy getting into the SUV, you know, staying in SUVs, but getting out of cars, everybody was gonna stop making sedans. It was like a thing of the past and all of a sudden, here comes this company that in a couple of years gets bigger market valuation than than some of the major automakers and becomes the lead maker of cars. I'm like, holy shit, how'd you, how'd you do that? And then starts putting rockets in space and, and lets us watch the failures. Oops, this one didn't make it. Oops, this one didn't, want, didn't make it. But, but then all of a sudden, hey, look, we got, we got astronauts up there. We got satellites up there. Oh, wait a minute. We're putting a satellite constellation up there, which I hate. Can't stand Starlink. Um, uh, there's a couple of uses for it that I like, like in Ukraine, but man, the, the idea of flooding space with these constellations makes me ill. Uh, but, yeah. but here's one guy, uh, who didn't single handedly do it, but who is the nexus, the hub, the spark for all these things going on. No wonder Tony Stark is modeled after him. Yeah. I but, mean, it's, you know, it, it's, he has the most money and he chose to invest it well. And then. But the the thing that made it work more than anything else, I think, is um, like it's his reality distortion field. Mm -hmm. And I think that was powered by Twitter. It was powered by two things. It was powered by Twitter is one thing, which Mm -hmm. is part of the reason why he's having problems, because Twitter is failing, but also because by taking control of Twitter, it shifts his what he can do on it right but the other reason is there was a really good tweet that went viral when he first bought it which is like so much of musk's reality distortion field came out of his fans Mm. and so many of his fans were like Hmm. looking at him as somebody who accomplished science fiction stuff without understanding what he was accomplishing which was part of the charm right but like a lot of those same people do understand engineering web engineering and understand what he's doing that's extremely dumb Mm -hmm. right so i think the tweet was something like uh you know he bought tesla and i thought what he was doing was great because i didn't understand how to build a car he bought spacex and i thought what he was doing was great because i don't understand how to build a rocket he bought twitter 
and I understand how to build a website. So now I'm thinking this guy's sort of a moron. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. So like that's a big piece of it, and, which I think is like itself sort of a power of Twitter thing, right? Like. I, I don't know. I, there, so many, there has been a lot of good that has come out of the capacity for people to build reality distortion fields around them in a way that was sort of like unprecedented unless you were royalty. Yep. I think like that's basically the only time that, or Kennedy, right? That Those are the only times that it has been possible to so unanimously and successfully create a reality distortion field around yourself. Um, and with Twitter, it became very easy to do if you had the right approach and the right numbers and the right sort of fan base. Um, and that's super powerful. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a shame because it's probably not great to return it to the return our society to the previous state either. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, right? Like, TikTok isn't doing it. Mastodon isn't doing it. Yep. No. Nope. So who, who is going to empower you to yell at? Like, they really like simple examples, right? Like, you could yell at American Airlines on Twitter and get a refund right. that you would not have otherwise gotten. Right. And that's not going to happen anywhere else. Because now American Airlines <laughs> knows better. Um, and there's just not enough density on any of the other platforms to shame them. Right. right so right. like I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's it's worrying. So um, I've kind of lost I kind of lost hope that there was a an earth, when when Musk first took over Twitter, there yeah, was an headphones with the, with the <clears> sorry. Oh, okay. <clears throat> when I first when Musk first took over Twitter there was a play of people saying, hey, we're just going to wait until he just so destroys Twitter that its value will go to zero. Can you hear me? Did, did your connector and connection break? Check, check. Hello. There there. Oh, good. Yeah. Whew. OK. Um, uh, I was just saying that yeah. when, when Musk first start, took over Twitter, there were a bunch of people who said, we're going to wait until he drives the value of Twitter down so low that we can do a you know basically an exit to community and buy him out. Uh, I just don't see how that works or how that pans out. But wouldn't that be cool? Like, let... yeah, I mean it would be cool, but he would just I think he'd rather burn it than let it go. Entirely possible. Um, yeah, I don't know. So. so... So we don't talk about like why Twitter is irreplaceable for the whole time. Um, what positive things are, are on your on your horizon? What do you what do you look? Oh at? yeah, uh, I uh, maybe blue. I've been doing more experimentation with blue sky stuff. I think they're building interesting things. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I think there's been like. Some notes on this. Yeah. Um, I think there's been some interesting progress um, for me on getting my notes site um, sort of up and running effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know nothing about Rust. So this is all new code building for me, but it's working quite well. Um, or rather, I am progressing quite well. It's not working yet. Right. So that's. Uh, that's exciting. Hmm. Um, there's, uh, what else has been popping up lately? I don't know. Let's see. How about you? What have you been working on lately that's got you thinking? Um, so I'm trying to get in better shape a uh, uh, presentation, a speech I'd like to give, a paid speech I'd like to give in more places about being a cyborg. And what does it mean to be a good cyborg? Our, our cyborg future of work, which I think is like looming large right in front of us. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what are the right words uh, that will resonate for people who buy speeches and who need to, you know, uh, train up their their staffs on these topics and so forth. And then as part of all that, a thing that's causing me to both waste time and think creatively about what this could look like is it seems like. A community of cyborgs would be a really useful thing to build around that concept. 
um, um, maybe this is too extreme an example, but there's millions and millions of programmers in the world who never took an ethics course or sat down and had conversations together about what, what you know, hey, what's good and what's bad about programming, who've been asked by managers to go write stuff that's in many cases unethical or like unhuman or whatever. Um, and wouldn't it be cool if the body of programmers were part of a guild like the Engineers Guild in Canada, uh, where there was some understanding of this is how we work and this is what we stand for. Um, so, I'm, so I'm trying to think of like, if, if I stood up a community like that, what platform should it be on, what to call it, um, what would be in it, all, the, all, all those kinds of things. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I mean, I know, um, I think we mentioned this in one of the previous conversations, but I am really interested in Hyla. Um, it's like community coordination software. H-Y-L-A? Uh, H-Y-L-A. L-A. Oh, I, I know H-Y-L-A. Yeah, I think it's H-Y-L-A. I don't... Maybe, I'm, maybe I mistyped it in my own notes. Very interesting. Yeah, uh, I don't know a Hyla. No, you're right. It's Hyla. Okay, uh, good. <laughs> That's weird. Why? Why do I huh. have it the wrong way in my notes? Okay. Hmm. And I know some people that are using Hilo, and they got bought by Holo. Huh. The people or the company like Hilo. Hilo and... As far as I as far as yeah. I know, Holo acquired Hilo, which is kind of funny. Yeah, I think like they're the hollow chain. Yes, exactly. People. Yes. Yeah. I've had people pitch me a couple of times about hollow chain stuff. And it seems like an interesting idea, but it's just one of those things where it's like it, my capacity to engage with its level of complexity is low right now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's on my to do list to read up more on. And I have I have to get back to like the meta gov person because I want to understand that better too. But like, whew, I, I just do not have the time. This is uh, it, it. Sort of amazes me. I don't know what it is about the cultural differences, but I've noticed that like folks on the West Coast seem to have a lot more time. <laughs> to engage in these types of things That's than folks on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's like a cultural, I don't know, some sort of like a not said but understood version of, um, what is it called that they do in Spain where they take a nap in the middle the of the siesta? day? Yeah, like a siesta for learning stuff on the yeah. West Coast that's, that's like funny. just understood at a corporate level. Yeah. But it is not, I don't know, it is not, uh, or maybe it's just like the weather's nicer longer and the sun's up longer or something like that. I don't know. That's funny. But I, yeah. I, had, I hadn't <laughs> noticed the trend, but I, but I do notice often that like my New York friends tend to be busier more of the time than my other friends. Um, yeah. Huh. It's it's definitely some sort of East Coast cultural thing versus some sort of West Coast cultural thing. Mm -hmm. um, Is it busy, somehow busyness? like busyness yeah. or it's less less about busyness, right? Because like going to these things clearly takes time. Going to talks, going to various events, getting go attending lectures, etc. Yeah. I think it's more just. Um, like focus lock-in mm -hmm. uh, and that's uh, yeah i could show you some another thing that i can observe but mm. not understand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah it's on my to-do list to eventually get out to reading all of the stuff about hollow chain and metagov and all of those things but neither seem to have a straightforward entry point at this at this time. I think, um, high low though does seem to be straightforward. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know only a little bit about Medigov, not a lot. Uh, and I'm I'm connected to some of the founders of a Holochain, but Holochain has now gone on long enough and had enough ups and downs and twists and turns that the story is a little hard to like grasp. It's like, oh wait, what worked? What didn't work? Where are you now? Um, yeah. 
it's hard it's hard to figure out what the current state is i just so wish that more entities had a here's what's up page that was a really easy way to come up to speed with where the community is like what they solved what their what their barriers are uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah kind of fun. i like that idea i mean that, that somebody had like what is it the what i'm working on page or something like that. yeah well i i have a slash now page um so here's a link to it. And if, if I send you an email, you'll see that my signature is nothing but slash now, which is a link to this page. And I don't, I don't edit this page nearly often enough because what I'm focused on changes pretty dynamically. But this is an attempt at an individual level to say, hey, here's what I'm working on, what I'm interested in, here's how to get a hold of me, uh, a few things like that. So what if, organi yeah. what if organizations had a now page? Yeah, that's a good idea. I wish Mark. Out of curiosity, to, on a total tangent, yeah. for like compensated speaking stuff, do you have a speaking agent? So I'm very you, curious how you, people manage that. Yeah, but they haven't brought me a lot of business. So part of my problem is I'm not a published author, and I think when you've written a book, that's a better thing to wave around. Um, and then I'm, I'm weird in that I, I don't have one thing. I have like five things I like to talk about. But I've, I've been represented by the same company that represents April, my wife, um, a little less time than she has. But it's been like six, seven years. And uh, last year was April's best speaking year ever because she's got a fresh book and she really went nice. to it and she put in she put in the work all over the place. Um, and I have, have had way too few speeches. And the one I just did came to me out of the blue and I just, I passed it to my, to the agent at, uh, at our agency who then kind of completed the whole thing, turned it into a contract and uh, brought it back to me saying, here, it's ready to go sort of thing. Um, but, but I'm trying to figure out, I'm really torn because I, I have some experience now with agencies and April just switched from being exclusive with this one agency, HWA, <clears throat> to not being exclusive and to having like five other agencies represent her, all of which happened like that when she when she sort of uh, cleared the air and had the conversation with HWA. And it, she had been bumping into other agents in other places who were basically hands off because she was exclusive and they were not trying to poach at all. And the moment she said, hey, I am now no longer exclusive, a bunch of them were like, awesome, let's talk. And that, that turned into a lot more representation, which is slowly starting to turn into some new speeches. Um, so yes, oh, that's great. so so this morning I gave a talk, but yesterday morning she gave a talk, which was her first talk booked by one of the new agencies. Um, so that's good. Um, yeah. But I'm trying to figure out how to do a self serve as much as possible. Like I, and I just may be being naive. And I was thinking about this this morning as I was showering. Um, on the one hand, I would love for my website about how to be a good cyborg to have a little matrix at the bottom that says, hey. Do you want virtual or in person, small, medium, large? Here's what that means. Click here and um, you can make a deposit and then we can figure out what to, you know, uh, basically do the whole thing self-serve as opposed to let me introduce you to my agent and then they, they pull the curtain and go negotiate stuff. Um, but I, I have no idea if, if this is going to work or not. So I, I'm yeah, kind of, I mean, I kind of have a foot in both camps. It would be nice. I think like, it's sort of weird, right? Because in some cases, like, it's not like with books, right? With books, you need an agent because, like, that's the mechanism by which people who publish books engage with authors. Whereas with speaking, there are probably some people who do exclusively, um, like, only interact with agents. So it'd probably be good to have one, but like, so it probably would be much easier to, um, to like, do it yourself yeah now with books as far as i can tell there are literary agents who help you find a publisher and and sort of guide you through that whole thing but they don't do a lot of publicity what you need then is a book publicist which is a whole separate thing and april right, but that didn't always used to be the case yeah right yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also we had you had fewer avenues for publicity there was less of a it was less of a thing even right um and so April did that. She she worked with a publicist as well uh, after her book launch, and that actually I think paid off really well because because her exposure was multiplied a whole bunch uh, coming out of the shoots. I just want to write something that's so viral, so contagious that it makes its own way across the world. But that is a uh, quite just a dream. 
Yeah, I mean, even that, I feel like it's, you have to be able to act on it in a specific way and be prepared yeah. to act on it in that way. And some people do and some people don't. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it was interesting to me because many years back, I had a very viral, speaking of Twitter, a very viral tweet thread. Um, and like, it fascinates me because especially with Twitter down frequently I use um, search, I search for stuff that I've tweeted yeah. using Google unrelated to that particular thread and keep seeing new things popping up, liking it. And when I see it, I'm like, eh, I probably could have had something in place to really act on that right. successfully. Um, uh, as opposed to right now where I do not, um, or, or didn't then i guess i'm trying to get more of something now yeah uh, and it was it was it, i think maybe in my attempt to get more of something in place i have been somewhat more successful because i had a viral thread on the new um cards they're trying to push out for the mta metro north uh, uh -huh. the mta the subway in new york yeah. city and that did get turned into an FT, not FT, um, Inc. No, fine. Some Street? magazine. Why? Why am I blanking on the magazine name? Forbes. It got it got turned into no, not Forbes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Someone who would actually pay me. Yeah. Um, where did I put it? Uh, if you only, but yeah, it money. got turned into an actual article that I got paid for to write, mm -hmm. um, which is good. It seems like a step in the right direction. Um, <laughs> ironically, though, the, the site got hacked like the literal next day. Oh, seriously. Um, and the whole whole magazine site went down for like seven days. Oh, that's um, horrible. So it did not get, a, as they say in journalism, a lot of legs. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fast Company. That was the. Oh, I remember that. Them. Yeah. Yeah. So that was good. I yeah. think um, I should add that to my LinkedIn. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's, you know, it's definitely a, a, another thing like virality and action and community and how these things interact or don't interact automatically. The, the sense that these things take, generally realizing these things take a lot of work. Mm -hmm. oh, I think it is already on my LinkedIn. I did remember to do that. I could have okay. just checked my LinkedIn. I'm adding, okay. it, I'm adding it to my room. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, uh, what's the other thing? Like, I was in my brain and I lost it. I saw a new. Uh, I saw a new um, like forum tool, like a PHP BB alternative called huh. Node BB, huh. um, which is built on top of Node, which seemed cool, but like, boy. I, I don't know. Their their pricing. It, it was interesting because like I looked at what their pricing was from like the home site, and I was their smallest tier is two hundred and fifty a month. A month. Yeah, and I'm like, Seriously? what this is, what this is telling me is that wow. this software is probably not very technically efficient, right? And right. so there's some overages on server costs that I wouldn't want to deal with, right? That, you're, but, that you would pay for as their customer instead of them figuring it out. <coughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Yeah, um, exactly. But like the flip side is I have like a one of my many hobby projects, which is to try and set up like a little Raspberry Pi with like a little home server. Not that's broadcasting the web, but that I could take around with me, plug into a battery, and then people can like, interact with it like a community in the moment cool um and, and uh i imagine it would be good for that um because i at this point i'd probably build that mostly in node anyway and then i don't have to worry about 
trying to figure out how to put Apache on there properly. Right, right. Interesting. Um, and all of that fun stuff. It's interesting you're mentioning this, and you mentioned Hilo a moment ago, because I was I was looking for what platforms would be maybe good to start a community for cyborgs, and I ended up uh, sort of back on uh, Mighty Networks, which a friend recommended, and I'd kind of forgotten it, forgotten they even existed still. Um, but there's a couple interesting successful communities on Mighty Networks, like ISPF runs uh, runs some things on Mighty. Um, Mighty Networks. Yeah. Interesting. They were founded as Mighty Bell uh, back in 2010. Gina Bianchini is one of the principals and founders. Oh, okay. When did she found it? 2010. Oh, so she's probably not associated with it currently. Don't know. I would have to go look at her LinkedIn. Yeah, I haven't caught, kept up on what she did, but I know she's done a couple of things that I like. Yeah. She was the one who built that really talking about like social media stuff, that really cool like social media archiving and orchestration software that I ran oh, for a couple yeah. of years. So she's the author of a book titled Purpose, Design a Community and Change Your Life, which is interesting. Didn't know that. And then uh, CEO and founder of Mighty Networks through the present. So she's still doing that. Oh, OK. I thought that she was doing something else. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Very interesting. Add that to my brain. I, I recorded a podcast. I, I did a talk this morning, and then I recorded a podcast with a friend. And it was just really fun to do because um, she was uh, the, the topic was uh, the pursuit of ideas. That was just her topic. I was like, what a great topic. That what, what a friendly topic to just think out loud about the kind of stuff that we talk about here uh, and other kinds of places. And um, a piece of our conversation was a little bit about what you're talking about, about East Coasters having less slack than West Coasters. Um, and she and I were talking about how very few, too few people have the time to look up and catch some context and do something that's just very different from the normal thing broaden their horizons, whatever else it might be. There's just not, there's just not a lot of room to go do that. Um, we kind of need more of it. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to see, like, it's, there seems to be less of it all the time, right? Like, companies are less likely to give you the 20% time or whatever. Yeah. And uh, companies, companies are doing all they can to get rid of FTEs, so... Yeah, I don't think there's a bright, shiny future for FTEs. I think FTEs are a thing of the last, uh, the last century, not the next century. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think that you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, um, unfortunately. Well, the problem is that our educational system and our expectations are all tied to um, to the FTE thing. Yeah, so there's a lot of societal level problems with how labor works in America. Yeah. Uh, that is for sure. Interesting. Okay. Crazy oh, I stuff. did find something that I thought um, folks here might like, including yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, let's find the link. I found um, a friend introduced me to this monthly. Uh, essentially computer plus poetry type project. Oh, interesting. Uh, that's been happening since like 2014. And oh, wow. I just have never heard of it until now. It's called Word Hack. Huh. A lot of their stuff is online, which is cool. Um, there's a link. Thank you. Todd Anderson. Huh. Don't have them in my brain. Damn. You have them in your brain all right? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Exactly. I was like, that'd be interesting. I'd love to know how yeah. if you did. <laughs> Very cool. Um, but that was really interesting. They had a talk. One of the people who talked was um, a researcher whose like, research project is trying to understand the history of 
um, like how we collected the rocks that became the silicon for computing. Mm 